Mission Web Chat. Today we're going to be talking about a piece of imaging equipment called the Spec CT Nuclear Medicine Camera. We've got a radiologist to talk you through what this equipment can do, exactly how it works, and even if you have any questions, we'd love for you to submit those too. Dr. Randy Wilson is with us today. He's a nuclear medicine and pet radiologist. He's going to be taking those questions for you in the next 15 or 20 minutes. If we can get to those live, that would be great, so submit those, um, and we're going to get things started. So let's get started with Dr. Wilson. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what a SPECT CT nuclear medicine camera is and why do you put those items together? Well, a SPECT is a type of nuclear medicine um, camera that's very similar to the general nuclear medicine cameras. With a general nuclear medicine study, you administer the radiopharmaceutical to the patient, you put the camera in front of the patient, and you get a two-dimensional image. Um, with SPECT, you do the same thing, but instead of just one image, um, the SPECT camera will move in a 360 degree arc around the patient. The computer then will reconstruct the 360 degree image of the patient, so you have a lot better anatomical localization. Um, the CT component of it is just like a regular CT scan. Um, back in the 90s when I was in residency and SPEC was just starting, we would have the SPEC scans and then we'd have a CT scan. You would look at them side by side and say, okay, here's the abnormality on the SPEC scan. Here's something on the CT scan. I think these probably match up. Now with the dedicated SPEC CT cameras, at one time with the patient on the table, you do the SPEC scan, you do the CT scan, and then the computer software will actually merge those two images together. So if you've got an abnormality on the SPEC scan, instead of having to guess where it is anatomically on the CT scan, you actually look at the fused images and say, okay, here's the lymph node, here's the parathyroid lesion, here's the abnormality that we're looking at. And it sounds like to me, as I've heard of more and more imaging technology advances, always looking for ways to take two images that you used to kind of have to look at two different things and kind of make a guess, and bringing and marrying those things together. It sounds like a trend for the industry, really. Right, we've been working on this for years. Spec CT is not new. We've had Spec CT here at the Fallout Hospital System for 12, 13 years now. Um, the initial cameras, though, the CT were first generation scanners, one slice, and gave you very limited anatomical details. So you were really guessing where the abnormality was. With the new um, dedicated SPEC CT cameras, you've actually got a diagnostic CT scan with a SPEC scan, so the detail's much more accurate, so you can say exactly where the abnormalities are instead of having to guess like in the old days. Yeah, and it really makes sense when you think about it. Talk about the difference between the SPEC CT and a PET CT. What are the difference between those? They're actually very similar. The PET CT's uh, newer technology. Um, right now, the main pharmaceutical we use is F18 FDG glucose um, for the PET scans. And basically what that does is anywhere in the body that's got increased metabolism will um, accumulate the FDG, and then you can do the PET CT and see where the activity is, where the abnormality is. There's multiple new agents coming out that will be much more specific than just glucose, but with FDA and Medicare approval, a lot of these are five to 10 years out. With SPEC CT, we've had this technology for 10, 15 years now, so a lot of the pharmaceuticals already approved for SPEC scanning. So we've got agents, instead of just saying, okay, this is metabolically active, we've got agents like Prostacent, which is monoclonal antibody to prostate cancer, that will go just to the prostate cancer cells. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the same thing. Um, we've got uh, triotide studies that will go to neuroendocrine tumors, so especially like carcinoid tumors will light up with those. The same thing with MIBG for adrenal adenomas. So with the SPEC CT, you just have a lot more pharmaceuticals that can be a lot more sensitive to say, okay, this is this pathology, as opposed to a PET scan where we'll say, well, this is abnormal, but we don't know what it is. Right, so it's giving you more options, really, yes, is what you're looking definitely. at. Yeah. Tell me, t what are the type of exams that can be performed with this equipment? Uh, I think the one of the first studies we started doing on these were probably bone scans. Um, in the past, when you just had the plain or the 2D bone scan images, you could look and say, okay, there's increased uptake like in a foot, and all you'd be able to say is, okay, it's probably in the midfoot, it's probably in the forefoot. Once you do the SPEC CT, you've actually got a diagnostic CT scan with it. You can actually look and say, okay, this activity is actually in the third metatarsal. This activity is in the cuboid. So you've got a lot better localization, especially for the podiatrist and for the orthopedic surgeon that helps them with their planning activities. Um, same thing, you can do SPEC CT with a uh, nuclear medicine white blood cell study. Mm -hmm. And again, um, you can um, look, do a, just a regular planar image 2D and say, okay, there's increased uptake overlying the foot, 
but you don't know, is that an abscess in the plantar aspect of the foot or is it actually osmolitis in the bones? With the SPECT CT, you actually see the <laughs> images. If there's an abscess, you'll see the activity in the abscess and nothing in the bone. If it's an abscess with osmolitis, you'd see the activity in the abscess, but the SPECT CT resolutions are good. You'd actually see a focal area increase uptake in the bone also, making you think that there is osteomyelitis associated with it also. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the next things we started looking at were parathyroid scans, and we've been doing parathyroid scans for years, and the general technique had always been to do just the planar 2D image. You'd get an anterior view of the neck, and you'd say, okay, there's activity on the left or the right side, and it would give the surgeon an idea, okay, do I go into the left side of the neck or the right side of the neck? With the SPECT CT, instead of just saying it's on the left side or the right side, you can actually say where it is in relation to the thyroid gland. Is it abutting the thyroid gland? Is it in the thyroid gland? Is it posterior near the carotid sheath? Is it midline near the trachea? So that way the surgeons have a lot better idea ahead of time going in what exactly is going on and what the best approach would be for that. So we have orthopedics, we've got head and neck, any other folks that would be interested or other um, images for this? The dermatologist, of course, um, we do a lot of um, nuclear medicine lymphocentigraphy, especially if there's a head and neck melanoma. Um, if you just do the planar 2D image, a lot of times you'll see there's activity below the mandible, say on the left or the right hand side. And with the 2D image, that's pretty much all you can say. With SPECT CT, you would actually be able to look and say, okay, there's increased uptake in the submandibular region. It corresponds to a one centimeter node on the CT scan, and you could show your head and neck surgeon or your dermatologist the CT and say, this is the node, this is the node that was lighting up, this would be the sentinel node you need to go after. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Any others that, that are, are prominent for this equipment? Um, I think we've had a lot of success with the uh, triotide studies. Um, it's um, an agent that's taken up by neuroendocrine tumors, especially carcinoid tumors. Um, with the SPECT CT, um, you get a lot better detail. The problem is that on just a regular planar image, you'll get a lot of uptake in bowel. And if you don't have the SPECT CT, a lot of times it's hard to tell is that uptake just physiologic uptake in the bowel or is it an actual lesion. We have the fused SPECT and CT images together. You can say, okay, if there's uptake in the bowel here and it's just an area of stool, then it's, ab uh, then it's no abnormality, it's just physiologic. If you see an actual node or an increased uptake in the wall that corresponds to the nodule, then you know that you've got an abnormality in that region. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like a lot of different uses, widespread applications for a lot of different specialties for this imaging. Right. Anytime that you need extra localization, extra sensitivity, the SPECT CT can be used in almost all the general nuclear medicine studies. Um, I know the cardiologists um, use it a lot for their um, stress <laughs> test, and it's really helped them um, localize the lesions. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, what are some of the benefits for the referring physician that would maybe refer a patient to this type of technology and the benefits for the patient as well? Um, for the physician, I think the main thing is a clearer report and interpretation. Instead of saying, I think this may represent or this probably represents or there could be a lesion here, you're a lot more sensitive, a lot more specific. You'd say there is increased uptake in the first metatarsal consistent with osteomyelitis, or you could say there is a nodule posterior to the thyroid gland of the right consistent with the parathyroid adenoma. So instead of hedging and hawing and saying could be, then you have a lot more sensitivity and a lot more accuracy. Mm -hmm. It's where the patient, um, you're really getting um, two studies done at once. Um, say you're talking about a, a SPECT CT scan for bones. Um, on a regular um, bone scan, you would see increased uptake in the foot, say, and you wouldn't know what's going on. Is it a stress fracture? Is it a pathologic fracture to osteomyelitis? Then you'd have to bring the patient back and do x-rays of the foot or do a CT scan of the foot. So it's two trips to the patient, two days the patient mm -hmm. has to take off work. With the SPECT CT, you're doing both at the same time, so you don't need that extra trip to the imaging center to get the second study. Yeah, convenience for patients. That's oh, I know yes. everybody's looking for that. And then a, a benefit for physicians, obviously, as you explained as well. Um, talk about um, who are the folks that are going to be reading these uh, SPECT CT reports? The SPECT CTs, um, all the radiologists in our group are board certified by the American College of Radiology. Um, we have um, three of us that are also um, board certified by the American Board of Nuclear Medicine, and we read all of the uh, PET CT scans and the SPECT CT scans done in the system. So we're dual boarded in um, radiology and nuclear medicine. And right now, the SPECT CT, uh, talk about where that's located. 
Um, the new SPEC CT we have is um, located down in Celebration in the Seaside Imaging Center. Mm -hmm. um, very convenient for the patients that live on the south side of town in Osceola um, County and the south side of Orange County. Um, beautiful hospital, brand new facilities. The patients rave about it all the time. Yeah, especially that seaside imaging area yes. is beautiful, very relaxing there. And for people to not have to do two, it might be worth a little bit longer drive to avoid doing two scans just to do the one. Yes, it we've had be. several physicians on the north side of town that have talked to the patients and said, let's send you down to celebration. We know that it's an extra 30 minute trip, but it might keep you from having to go back a second yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Um, and then also talk about the benefits of the the spec CT camera over some other modalities some other choices um, that that are out there um, I think the main thing for um, nuclear medicine versus radiology is radiology is very good at anatomical localization whereas nuclear medicine shows the physiology say you've got a patient um, that you think has a pheochromocytoma they've got abnormal um, blood work hypertension you do a CT scan and you see an enlarged adrenal gland you don't know what that enlarged adrenal gland is. Is it a pheochromocytoma? Is it just a benign adenoma? Is it something else? If you actually do the nuclear medicine study and you do MIVG and you've got increased uptake, then you know that it is a neuroendocrine tumor in the adrenal gland and most likely is a pheochromocytoma. So not only localize an abnormality, you have a better idea that that is the abnormality you're looking for. Or say you've got a patient and you're worried about a pheochromocytoma, and you've got fullness of the adrenal glands, but no uptake on the MFG study, but then you see uptake down around the organ azucondal that is actually an extra adrenal field chromocytoma. On a regular CT scan, it's very hard to pick up the extra adrenal field chromocytomas because they're so small. On the nuclear medicine study, since it concentrates the activity, it's much easier to see. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like this is, you know, certainly wide-reaching. Uh, a lot of physicians uh, could benefit from this. Is it pretty easy to get patients in and out and, and kind of get through this technology? Um, very easy. Um, uh, for the patient, it's really no different than getting a regular nuclear medicine study. Um, they come to the department. Um, they're usually administered the radiopharmaceutical, and then depending on the type of study, they'll return to the department anywhere between one and three hours later, um, get the scan, and since it's the SPECT and CT on one table, the patient lays on a table, the computer does the SPECT scan, does a CT scan, and the patient's gone. They don't have to move to a separate table to get the CT scan or a separate room. So mm -hmm. from the patient, especially the patients that have problems with mobility, it's much easier. Fantastic. Dr. Wilson, thank you so much for sharing your expertise on the SPEC CT nuclear medicine camera, and hopefully we've educated some folks about what it is and how it might be easy for them. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. To learn more about the image, um, the image device that we've been talking about, the SPEC CT nuclear medicine camera, you can uh, visit seasideimaging.com on the internet. That can give you a little bit of information about the location where this SPEC CT is. Um, if you'd like to schedule um, a patient or or give a referral, you can do that over the phone by calling 407-303-4111. Again, that number is 407 303 Four one one one. We also have an opportunity if you have any follow-up questions that you wanted to get answered or need more information about the SPEC CT, you can do that through Amy Koch. She is the imaging representative at Celebration Health and she can talk to you about this device and others as well. You can reach Amy a couple of ways uh, right there on your screen. The number to reach her is 321-231-3815. And of course, her Florida Hospital email is there as well, amy.koch at floridahospital.org. Thank you so much for participating and watching to the web chat we have today. I'm Jennifer Roberts, and we hope you'll join us again.